use this little tool here called the mitre ruler to help us get the corners so that they're nicely mitered. I've put on my D foot which is the hemming foot because it has a ridge down the bottom and the piping runs lovely through is guide it along this line and so I'd like to show you I've put all my border together so I can do it in one continuous piece so if you can see you can see I've got a nice line and it comes right next to the, the piping I don't want it too far away or you'll have a gap because when you fold it over this is what you're going to see and once you've pressed your binding strip you see that you do have some e uneven edges and this is, a, this is the stage where if you want to you can trim them up and what I use is I usually use my cutting ruler and what I do binding is I'm cutting it one and a quarter inches to the piping two and three quarter pieces of fabric. Now you're going to start on the wrong side of your quilt. That's very important. Otherwise your piping comes to the back. Here's my piping. This is the good side and I'm putting the side with all the, the piping binding to the back. Don't put it to the edge or you'll have nothing to do your mitering with. Leave yourself a good two or three inches. And what you're going to do is you're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam and you start a quarter of an inch in. That's very important. My machine does a little fixing stitch and off we go. Run my finger along and there's a line there where the quarter of an inch is. And all I have to do is put my needle into that line and off I go. Remember not to let your quilt hang over the edge or else it will be heavy on your machine. Just so that we remember. We have sewn the piping down the centre of the, bound, the binding. We've then trimmed it to whatever width we want the binding to be. We've brought it to our quilt and we have now sewn it onto the back of our quilt with a quarter of an inch seam at each corner. So each corner we have folded the corner back, brought the, the quilt and sewn another quarter of an inch. Now we're going to take it to the ironing station and we're going to press it. Now I'm only going to press the corners. That's the line I want. Now I have this handy little tool, it's called the mitre ruler and I'm going to take it and I'm going to place the tip of the ruler on that line and then line it up with the stitches here. I'm going to draw a line, so from the edge of the stitching down and across. And Can you see my line? This is where I'm going to stitch. I'm going to stitch along here to the point and I'm going to come along here and stitch. I have stitched along the line and I've stitched that arrow that the mitre has created. I haven't came, come off the piping because if I do I'll see the white stitches and I don't want to see that. So then I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut it from about a quarter of an inch. And that's just rubbish now. Then where I've got this little tab here in the corner I like to just trim that off because it's bulky in the corner. Then I'm going to open this seam. I'm just going to push it through with my thumb. And you can see we have a really nice mitre there on the corner. You can use your scissors to push it out if you want to. Careful you don't push it through. And there we are. 
I don't normally start in the corner because they're bulky, so I start in the middle somewhere. I've changed my thread to invisible thread. You could change it to blue or yellow, but I, if you use invisible, you don't actually see it if you come out of the seam. And I have a, a foot on with a little lead, which is where the stitches should fall. Do a little back tack. You can see I'm just sewing along. And all I'm going to do is fold this over, take out that piece of blue thread there, I don't want it, that's it. 